welcome back to Teach Man to Fish channel. Today's video, and don't run away when I say it, we're going to be discussing deer liver. Now some of you may be coming here because you're looking to up your game on what you're harvesting from the deer. Some of you are looking for a new recipe. Maybe you've been doing the liver and onions for years and you want to branch out. This is not going to be a liver and onions recipe. In this video, we'll be talking about cleaning it up, how to slice it because it does matter, and then simple preparation and cook, ingredients that are easy to find, not a complicated recipe. Let's take a quick second and talk about the nutritional benefits of eating liver. It is nature's vitamin pill. It covers many of the nutritional needs that, that we have in order to keep our bodies healthy. It's got B12, folate, vitamin C. Liver can even target specific vitamin deficiencies that you may be having. Say vitamin A uh, for skin and eyesight. Maybe you have some iron deficient blood. Add a little bit of liver into your diet. Vitamin E, vitamin K, copper very high in copper, and that's actually the flavor that I think you can taste sometimes when you're eating liver. You get that kind of metallic flavor. That's some of those vitamins, and specifically copper, that you're getting. Your body needs it to remain healthy. Liver can provide phosphorus, something to keep in your mind. If you've got somebody in your house that's uh, vitamin deficient, maybe older and struggling to get some nutrient-dense food into their diets, you can turn to liver. Very small portions provide exactly what the body needs. And if you think about for the older set, say 50, 60, 70 years ago, liver was a staple in the diet because it was so nutritionally dense. We've moved away from that flavor as a society and I think it's time to get back to it. So for the first part of this, the cleanup, let's go ahead and head over to the sink. So we've already talked about how the liver is a nutrient dense, high blood flow organ. Well, some of that, I like to get that blood out of the organ. And there's an interesting way to do that. Right through this area, you've got all those blood vessels concentrate and flow up into the body from these arteries and ventricles. And we'll talk about the ventricles later. But if in your sink, you can do a massage and that blood will come out of the organ. You can see it flowing out right there in kind of a pumping action. What you can also do, and this is a little bit messy, you gotta kinda guard against it, but you can take your spray hose, put it over top of most of those, and you'll watch this organ swell up and fill with the water, and you can get that, then get that out. You can see that all that blood is coming out once we run that water in. And now that organ is very tight and full of that water and it'll flow out. I might do that a couple of times. Let the blood flow out, fill, the, fill it back up, fill the liver back up, and then let it drip out again. Well, let's get into cleaning the deer up. As with any butchering process, one of the things that you're looking at is the health and condition. There's no spots, there's no evidence of disease, no dead portions. This was a healthy young deer that this liver was taken from. Let's take that drained out liver and start to do the cleanup. And again, we talked about all of these veins and arteries and ventricles that flow from this center point out to the rest of the liver will define how we do the cleanup and the cutting on this liver from this point forward. So first of all, let's go ahead and split this down that lobe. You can see some of those heavy arteries and ventricles and veins right through there. Those are all tough. So with that concentration of that here in the top, let's go ahead and cut all of that out. By the way, the sharper the knife when doing this, the better, the less waste you'll have. I like to cut away, make a nice crisp edge 
all the way around the outside. So the exterior of the liver, I guess you kind of compare it to membrane or the, the blue skin on the rest of the meat, very similar. As it cooks, it will shrink up and become very tough. So we're going to clean that away as well. Now that we've got those two lobes nice and cleaned up, we remember that in those lobes, all of those arteries, veins, and ventricles all flow towards the outside. You don't want to cut with those because that would mean somebody would end up getting a long strip. Just like other parts of the meat, you want to cut against the grain or the flow of that. And for this, we're going to make little half inch cubes. So as many of you know that YouTube restricts the income that, that I earn from videos that have got hunting in it, butchering meat, there, down below there's a Patreon link that you can use. If you enjoy this channel, for as, as little as a dollar a month, you can show your support, click the Patreon link, and support my efforts on the channel. Go ahead and cut, that's a large blood flow and vein right there and there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out, knowing that they're not gonna add anything. Since I can see them, easy to cut out. We'll go ahead and get rid of those. Now let's take that and soak it in milk. Soaking that in a cup of milk or so, will, you'll see it'll draw some more of that blood out and reduce some of that gamey flavor or the liver flavor that a lot of people don't like. Set that to the side. Most of us know that there's a, a couple of parts of the deer that can be eaten day of harvest. The vast majority of the deer ends up going into an aging process Aging in the refrigerator, I like to do between four to 10 days, depending on my schedule, but that gets rid of the gamey flavor, allows the meat to relax. Some of that stiffness disappears, some of that game flavor drops off, all with the aging process. But when it comes to the heart, the liver, the inner loins, those can be eaten day of harvest. Oftentimes, that's the first meal we get off the deer in my family. Within the next day or two of taking it, this is what we're eating. Now we'll go ahead and get the rest of the ingredients put together. So you can make your own base, but I, what I found is this Goya Sofrito, it's in the Goya section in your grocery store, is a wonderful, lots of flavor. It's got tomatoes, green peppers, onions, garlic already in it. Doesn't have a whole lot of texture, so I like to fortify it with something else to give it a little bit more uh, hardiness as a sauce, but easy to use. I like to use mushrooms as well. And I've got an extra leek, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a leek. It's got a very mild onion flavor, but you can also use an onion. So I've got some delicious bacon grease, uh, as well as some bacon bits and little bits from breakfast this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and use that pan that has all that goodness in it as a part of this cook. You pick the oil that you like. I prefer bacon grease when I'm cooking the liver. Oh man, that already smells amazing. Throw some salt, pepper, and garlic into that.
So you'll see a lot of the equipment that I'm using here. Uh, if any of it interests you down below, I'll put links, Amazon links down below. Uh, you can go in there, they're paid links, you can go ahead and order to help support the channel. If you're interested in the cast iron, there's nothing that beats flame on cast iron. So this stove, uh, maybe some of the knives, even the spices are available to order on here. So take a look down below for the links. We'll wait for those leeks and the mushrooms to release their juices, become a little translucent. Almost forgot the garlic. because we're gonna cook some of that off during the last part here where we're cooking up the liver. Throw a little bit of bacon grease with that liver to come rest in. So we've drained all the milk off of that. That heat is turned way up. And this is a quick cook. Part of the beauty of this liver is I know everything about it. I know virtually what it was eating. I know how old it was. I know the freshness. I know how it was cleaned. I know how it was stored. And sometimes with organ meats, a lot of those questions enter into your mind. What is the history of this organ meat? Is it fresh? Uh, there's things that you can look at to determine whether or not the liver that you're getting is fresh or has it been stewing in its own juices for the last week uh, and not quite the way you'd want to eat it. So that's one of the advantages of using this recipe, harvesting that liver out of the deer. You know everything about it. Who's touched it? You name it. It's been in your control. And if you follow this recipe, and I'm not gonna tell you every deer the liver tastes the same because sometimes you do get some that's a bit more pungent than others, but pretty much early season, young deer, there's the, the liver flavor is not overpowering. And if you've been throwing that liver out, you're wasting one heck of a nutritious meal that your family could be enjoying. All right, we're wrapping up. If you're worried at all about the doneness of that, you can take a piece of liver, slice a piece in half, a couple of pieces that are finishing off a little bit. You can go in and see whether or not you're, you're happy with the doneness with that. I am. It'll finish up in the rest here. And I definitely like my liver on the tender side. And overcooking it can make it tough. So. We'll let that settle out and then go ahead and get ready to plate. We've also got to put a garnish on this. There's the finished product. A little bit of goat cheese on top, some citrus to go along with it. Garnished with some parsley. Tender, not overpowering with liver flavor. You won't go wrong with that next year. Taking the time to pull that liver out, carry a bag with you separate in your rucksack. You won't go wrong adding this meal to the list of things you can eat on the day of harvest. Another thing that I've noticed about liver coming out of deer the taste of the liver can vary from both season to season, diet, uh, age of the animal. Just because you may have gotten a liver that you didn't enjoy the taste of, don't write off deer liver as a part of the harvest. I can tell you, a young, early season deer, the liver doesn't pick up a lot of those flavors that a struggling deer in December or January may have. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. And this is a playlist of all of my other venison, hunting, reloading, shooting, you name it, it's on that playlist. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.